The following is in for visuals shop floor. We'll be reviewing the inventory application. The following is part of the shop floor video series. The current video will look at shop floor work order material, otherwise known as inventory. And we can begin by looking at some of the common features, primarily looking at the user preferences and inventory transaction tools. We're going to go into the work order material, and you'll notice that once I get in there, we're going to start to cover these options. Most of this functionality will be similar to inventory transaction entry inside of Visual. Let's go to preferences, and I'll go to the material preference. And I'm looking at a user preference. The selected group of preferences that I have here allow the user in every transaction type to go through and either clear the form and start another similar transaction or they can return to the work order material menu. So as an example, let's do an adjust in. I'll select the material. The details for the selected part fill in, including the warehouse and the default location. I can modify the location at this point. I can put in a reason. I can put in an account ID and I can further put a description for this transaction. I'll enter in my quantity and you'll notice up in the header once I tab through the submit button is available and I will submit and I'm brought right back to the adjustment in transaction where I can go through and add in another adjust in type transaction. Notice we have the option to enter in trace attributes with this entry as well as pictures. Setup in part maintenance can display. Next, adjust out transactions can have similar display options and selections. Let's go back and review additional preferences. Now I'm logged in as sysadm and I'm going to show you some other settings. Starting with ask for confirmation before save. And we've already seen announced transactions accepted. So we'll follow up on that example. Let's use the issue to work order utility to begin. I'll start off by selecting a work order. On selection, some of the prime attributes are added. I'm gonna focus down to the operation sequence. I can browse for the part or the requirement on that operation that I want to issue parts for. And you'll see the confirmation message that we just added. And then we also get the transaction accepted message. Also similar to inventory transaction entry, users can enter in a new requirement if they have the security privileges. Going back into preference maintenance, I would like to cover the scan settings for issuing or issue returning. You have the option now to scan in a description or enter a description during the process. For an example of these scanning options, let's move over to the work order material section. In here, I'm going to go over and put on the scan mode. And you'll notice now in the header, there is a new field that comes up. This is the active field. And I've gone through and I've scanned in a transaction type. And this is my issue transaction that I'll demonstrate. I've also come in and now I will scan in my base ID header information and then I'll move down and scan in the material card at this point. Scanning the material brings me over to the warehouse. I can enter a warehouse or continue with the current primary warehouse. The same with the location. Moving into the next phase, I can come in and put in a quantity. Once I accept the quantity, the process moves to allow me to enter a reason code. And the next step in the process now would be a description. I'll issue that material. And based upon our preference setting of clear form, I won't go back to the main menu. I'm sent back here to enter in my next issue to work order transaction. Issue return from work orders will have a similar interface to the issue application. Next, we can take a look at receipt from work order. I've already selected my work order. And here's where I can go through and add in the quantity. In this example, I have a trace part that I'm receiving. So here you can see the trace attributes that are coming across. I can add them here. I can delete and I can also reset any trace information from this dialog. 
I'll accept the trace information at this point. Once the trace is accepted, it now also makes available labels. So if I have labels set up, I can go through, either choose my label or my label group, select the label that I want to use for printing, confirm the attributes, and accept. I can submit this receipt, confirm the transaction, and transaction accepted. Now we can take a quick look at the return to work order. So if a finished good receipt needs to go back to the work order, you can see that the dialog is going to be comparable to the work order receipt entry. Now that we've covered some of the common features, let's go over and take a look at the advanced features for the work order material inventory section. We'll begin by looking at issue by work order. We'll look at issue all as well as return all. Starting in the main menu with the work order materials, I'm going to go over to issue by work order. Inside of this view, I can now go through and select a specific work order. With the top level selected, you can notice as I scroll down, I can see all the materials that belong to the top portion of this work order. Next, I can filter it even further by selecting the operation sequence. And I only see the materials that are required for that operation. Additional filtering and display options can be found underneath the Show More button. Here you can see Part ID and Resource ID can be selected or filled in, as well as now you have the Order by Part ID and Descending Order selections available. I will now select the Issue All button, and you'll notice that I do get one warning because I have Auto Issue Materials inside of my current selection. I'm going to press through on that, and here is my Option menu. Let's go through the current options. First option is to issue up to the total available balance for the part itself. The next one would be to ignore that total balance and just do the complete issue. Third would be to prompt for inventory locations. The fourth is to issue up to the primary location. The final option would be to issue from the primary location, ignoring the quantities. So we will over issue at the primary location. If you'd like to preview the transaction before saving, put this final option on. For this example, I'm going to choose Prompt with Inventory Locations, which will bring up a new dialog. In this dialog, I can go through and actually determine which quantities I want to select from each individual location. So I have only a couple locations in this example, and I'm going to take three from the first location and seven from the second location. The next part in the list automatically comes up. And here's where I can decide how much to put per location. When I'm done, I do get the display based upon the setting that was in the previous dialog. Let's review the results of the issue all transaction. You'll notice that I have two parts that went through the transactions. Scrolling to the right, here you'll notice the required quantity, issued quantity, and remaining quantity showing the full display. Let's take a look at the return all feature. If we go into the window now, there's a return issue materials flag. I can put that flag on and it now makes the issue all a return all switch. My operation was closed in that last exercise, so I'm going to reopen it here in this step. And we have two options here. We can either return all to the original locations or we can be prompted for inventory locations similar to the example we did for issue all. The option to preview transactions before saving is also available here. The available warehouse locations dialog allows me to go in and modify where the quantities will be returned to. And it'll scroll through each part and give me the dialog at the end telling me what has been returned. After submitting the changes, I'm brought back to the main dialog where I can also review the required quantity, issued quantity, and the remaining quantity. Now we can go and look at transfers. We're going to go into location to location transfers. Inside of the dialog, I'm going to go through and begin by selecting the part ID. From a selection list, I'll just grab the top part ID and you'll notice that none of the other items fill in at this point. I can go to the preferences underneath the material preferences and now set the autofill location, which is a user preference. I'll submit and you'll notice automatically the warehouse and location populate. I can also come in and fill in the two warehouse ID and location ID into my quantity. 
select the reason code if needed, and additionally put in a description. I can submit the transaction and it's done the transfer for me. You'll notice that you can also do locations on the fly using the application. Settings from site maintenance also apply here inside of shop floor maintenance. Notice the part location on the fly flags. You have not allowed, assigned to existing locations, and create new locations and assign to part. All apply here inside of the shop application. I'm going to go in and adjust it in a part as an example. And the primary location for the part displays. And you'll notice that I only have one location currently for this part ID. I'm going to go in and try to add it to area 2 which does exist in the database but is not attached to the part ID. I will attach it to the part ID at this point in time. Here's where I can go through and update the location information. I could have also gone through and created a brand new location to that warehouse. And that's what I've done in this example. And it's asking me if I want to add the warehouse and also add it to the part going to accept it at this point in time and here I can also modify that location information there's also a dialogue for work order transaction history I'll select work order transaction history once I'm inside of the dialogue I'm going to go up and use the browse to select a base ID I'll select this first work order and the attributes that are associated with it can come through. And below you can see the transactions that have happened against it. Scrolling across, you can see all of the information that's available. There are additional filters. In here, you've noticed that I've selected work order 151, and I can filter it down further just to show you the receipts. And I can drill down to the details on this one specific receipt, or I can go back and I can actually do the label printing from this one application. The last feature we will look at is the standalone print labels feature. Going into the print labels option, here you can see that I can either choose the label or label group, depending upon my setup for label printing in visual. Label types include labor trace, traceable, or as you can see now I'm gonna choose part and I've filled in my information by selecting the part that I want to have the labels printed for. Put in my print quantity, press print, and here's an example of my output for the lot. Thank you for watching this video on the shop floor video series. We have covered the work order material inventory section.